every uh, gold bug will tell you, or gold uh, monetary thinker will tell you that you know, gold's not the best thing in the world. It's not a perfect money, but it's the best we've got. Well, that was true before 2009, and now we have something better. Start investing in gold and silver at sdbullion.com today and join over 35,000 precious metals investors who have made the switch to the lowest gold and silver prices in the industry. SD Bullion recently claimed a spot on the prestigious Inc. 500, making them one of the fastest growing bullion companies in the United States. With low bullion prices and over-the-top customer service, SD Bullion is setting the standard for precious metals transactions. Visit www.sdbullion.com today. Start saving on every precious metals purchase you make. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with financeandliberty.com and back with us today is Bix Weir from roadtoruta.com. Bix, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks Elijah. It's, it's been a while since we chatted. Definitely, and I wanted to, a chance for viewers to ask you questions, and I asked viewers to submit questions, and we got a whole lot of them, so we'll go as fast <laughs> as we can. Since cryptocurrencies have been just skyrocketing, and some of them have uh, gone down now, the, the market over there in the crypto world has just been crazy recently. We got a lot of questions about cryptocurrencies, and this first question is about um, your thoughts on the powers that be, their plans for cryptocurrencies. What are your thoughts on the powers that be, their plans for a cashless society and Bitcoin? Well, there's there's a, a few things. The, the bigger question is, you know, who's in charge these days? Uh, I have long been exposing the fight between the good guys and the bad guys as far as the upper echelon, the powers that be. And I believe that the good guys have taken out the bad guys. So they still have plans for us and plans for uh, our monetary system, but it is not going to be the uh, plans of the bad guys, the one world government, the Illuminati guys. Uh, they they are being removed as we speak, and um, I do not believe they have the power. So the question comes down to what are the plans for the cryptos with the good guys, and do they play a factor in, uh, in the future? Yes, absolutely. Uh, what they're trying to do, the problem we had was we knew the system was bad. We knew we had to destroy the current monetary system, but it was very difficult to go on to gold and silver standard because not many people had gold and silver anymore. Um, and they had suspected that had they allowed the banks to crash, that the system would have shut down. There'd be no food. There'd be no water. There'd be chaos, death, despair, the whole thing. So they'd been looking for decades for a way to move from a bad situation, the unbacked fiat system run by the Federal Reserve, to something new. Cryptocurrencies came along. I believe they were part of uh, the, the federal, U.S. federal government, the CIA and the NSA and, and the uh, Federal Reserve were, had a hand in the development, at least definitely the early days, but probably development from the Satoshi Nakamoto side. Uh, many people believe it was a group of people that invented Bitcoin. Um, so it is not necessarily just because it's the deep state uh, within the U.S. government it is not necessarily the evil part of that apparatus. So, yes, I think the plan is to grow the cryptocurrency sphere as far as as currencies and as tokens used in businesses, grow that part of the market simultaneously with running the current system. So there's an easy transition from one, the bad side to the good side. So that's kind of what I think they're doing. So that means they're going to rig gold and silver a little longer, unfortunately. Now, this viewer is wanting to know, does it appear as if the Bitcoin miners have escalated the price of Bitcoin over the last couple of weeks and are now dumping it and into other cryptos or U.S. dollars until the fork settles? Uh, no, no, this isn't this isn't a minor the, the Bitcoin miner issue. Uh, the rise in Bitcoin is people are waking up to the fact that it is a a sound and honest alternative to the current system. Uh, just look at the Coinbase, which is the largest online uh, wallet. It is it is going crazy with the amount of people signing up. I heard like 40,000 people signed up in a week and all kinds of people around the world are waking up to the fact that the cryptocurrencies are here. They are an alternative to these criminals who control our money right now. 
And that's why you're seeing price appreciation. And also it's because the old system is dying. And all those all those dollars and yen and yuan, they all have to flow into something. And everybody says you know, real estate is overblown and stocks are overblown and uh, the cryptocurrencies, yes, they're going up crazily, but it's a tiny, tiny bit of the overall market. This viewer is wanting to know, with the crypto market in a downside, are you personally mining in any cryptos and which ones do you believe we should invest in currently? Uh, the, the current downturn is nothing unusual for Bitcoin. As a matter of fact, you can see it has happened many times in the past. Uh, I do believe we've bottomed already over the last couple of days. So uh, ex I expect a slow rise up and then another giant spike, uh, probably double the price of the last spike. So you're going to get up near $5,000 for Bitcoin. Uh, as far as mining, I am not a miner. I don't uh, I don't play in that game. Um, I'll, no, I take that back. I had a 21 ink miner, but I think I ran it for six months and made about 50 cents. So it's not worth it for the little guys to mine. Um, but I am very active in the cryptocurrencies. I think Litecoin is the call right now as far as the, the major currencies. Uh, Bitcoin will be fine, but it really is uh, blocking itself out of the day-to-day -day transaction. And Litecoin is very similar to Bitcoin. I think it's the second longest running crypto besides Bitcoin. And it's four times as fast and I think four times as cheap or a lot more cheaper. So you can actually buy a cup of coffee with Litecoin, whereas uh, with Bitcoin, it, it, it takes too long and it's too expensive. So Litecoin is a, a great uh, crypto to go after. And then there's some new ones, new companies that have come out that have issued tokens. And one of the most exciting ones is Vertasium. Vertasium is a token uh, developed by Reggie Middleton. And the design of that token is to take out the criminal exchanges like the comics and things like that. Um, and that token should do very well. And he's a smart guy. He understands the industry. So I'm buying Veritasium. I'm buying Litecoin. Uh, I'm, uh, Ethereum has dropped so far. It's a good time to buy as well. Uh, Ethereum is an amazing technology that all these businesses are, are basing their token uh, access to the blockchain on. So, yeah, those are the, the big guys. And then there's all the ICOs, the initial coin offerings, new companies coming out. Um, there's a lot of them. And you really have to do your homework, but you can really hit home, run, home runs on, on the ICOs that are going to be around. Um, yeah, it's exciting. Definitely. And you were talking about Litecoin, and this viewer has a question about it. Now, I don't, I don't know enough about cryptocurrencies to really make sense of this, but it seemed like you were saying it's easier to buy things with Litecoin than Bitcoin. And this viewer is wanting to know, do you think that Bitcoin will become more of a store of value rather than a medium of, of exchange and Litecoin could become more a medium of exchange? Well, that's a good way to put it. I mean, that, that's what the, the core developers of Bitcoin decided that they would uh, put all their focus on making Bitcoin more secure. And that's the whole SegWit argument. Um, it does increase the speed a little bit, but not much and not for long. So the idea behind the Bitcoin people was let's turn Bitcoin into gold. And obviously you can't use gold in day-to-day -day transactions. So uh, all the focus with Litecoin has been about speed and cost. Get your cost down, get your speed up. Uh, and the really interesting thing is this, this SegWit uh, uh, user acti activated software type of thing. The, thing. the big thing coming in on August 1st for the Bitcoin people are, are really pe turning Bitcoin investors kind of into people looking for an alternative and Litecoin is just standing there saying, hey, we're four times as fast and we're a lot cheaper. And MIT is making an announcement that day. They say it's about Litecoin. Probably they've been working on something called the Lightning Network, which would make it even faster. So uh, yeah, Litecoin is a, a trading at like $40 right now. It's screaming by. This viewer is wanting to know about silver and what your thoughts are on how much will silver be able to purchase after the debt-based financial system has collapsed? Some people have said, you know, you'll be able to buy a house with 500 ounces of silver. Some other people have said maybe even just five ounces of silver would buy a house. What is your perspective on what will be the purchasing power of silver after the collapse? Well, that's it's very difficult to comprehend that 
that silver has been manipulated since the 1850s. So it's, it's and, and the manipulation is in, in a price suppression. So it's very difficult to understand what a true value of silver is in relation to other things. It used to be an ounce of, what was it that, a dime, a silver dime, a tenth of silver was a day's wage. Um, it used to be that gold, an ounce of gold bought a good suit. Silver is still massively, massively uh, undervalued. Uh, I don't think people will be selling their silver when the system crashes. I think they'll be hoarding silver. And the, comp the people who will be buying silver will not be the everyday people, obviously, because they'll have no money. Uh, it will be the corporations that are inventing the new uh, technologies of tomorrow that require a lot of silver. And they're going to have a lot of money, and they're going to need a lot of silver. So... Yeah, I think uh, silver will be valued at least one to one with gold in purchasing power um, just because it's more useful as a tool. And gold is a great store of value, but uh, you know it's not useful as money. Uh, it never has been because it's you know so much is, value is packed in, in one small ounce. You're not going to walk around with a, a thousand, thousandth of an ounce of gold and, and make purchases. I don't, I don't think uh, any government's going to turn back to gold and silver as money either, though. Because uh, they don't need to anymore. They've got the cryptocurrencies, and and they always hated them. So uh, it, it, it might be used as a store of value, but when the trust of, in the system goes away, and a new uh, type of currency is going to be decided upon, it'll be what can we trust the most? And the blockchain technologies and the cryptos are absolutely the most trustworthy, and the most visible, and the easiest to use in a technological society. This viewer is wanting to know, at some point, do you expect a nation to declare a gold-backed currency, which will create a domino effect of other nations following suit, with the result of a significant devaluation or crash of the dollar? So, did you want to discuss your perspective on this? Yeah, I, I think the, the plan was, the road to Ruta plan, the stuff that came out of the Fed Boston, was to go back onto a gold standard. That was always the plan since 19, you know, 1913 when the Federal Reserve was invented. The plan was to go back onto a gold standard. Um, but the reality was that over those hundred years, they never could figure out a way to do it without causing all this chaos. With the invention of, the, of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies, I don't really think the plan is to go onto a traditional gold standard anymore. It is not necessary anymore. And that'll be really interesting given, you know, the gold bug stance on, you know, gold is money. That's all it's ever been. That's true, but it's never had competition, really. Gold, you know, every uh, gold bug will tell you or gold uh, monetary thinker will tell you that, you know, gold's not the best thing in the world. It's not a perfect money, but it's the best we've got. Well, that was true before 2009. And now we have something better. And that's that's the cryptocurrencies, maybe not Bitcoin. Maybe the other cryptocurrencies, maybe these tokens that are being, you know, these, these kind of like currencies and kind of like stocks and kind of like warrants that are being issued by these companies that you will need to use these to participate in their realm. And, uh, you know, I, people say, oh, it devalues every time there's a new crypto, it devalues the rest of them. No, I don't think so at all. I think cryptocurrencies that have a use will gain value over time. Absolutely. For people who want to use them. Uh, Bitcoin, obviously, and, and Litecoin will be used as money, and there'll be massive need for that when the, the monetary system crashes. But uh, as far as gold, I, I think for a while it'll have a, um, a store of value type of value, I think, as the old system dies. Um, but as far as the use of money, I don't, I don't even think governments will value it as much as the cryptocurrencies. Okay, so if you don't mind me just giving you a bit of a hard time here. so Bring it on. I remember when I was first interviewing you and you were talking about how this whole financial system is based on just confidence and that all this debt and paper currency is just blips on a computer screen. It doesn't have any real value and that gold and silver were what have real value because they have intrinsic value and that all these blips on a computer screen will go away. Now it seems like you're changing your view and you, you're saying that cryptocurrencies, which to me it seems like are just blips on a computer screen, you're saying that that's now better than gold? Well, I, I didn't. I never said it has intrinsic value that I know of. 
intrinsic value means you know there's value in it no matter what happens, and that's not true for anything. Intrinsic value is a perception of value. Uh, so if you're if you're on a desert island and you have an ounce of gold, there's no intrinsic value with that gold. You'd rather have a glass of water. Um, but yeah, before the invention of uh, Bitcoin and the blockchain technology, gold was the most trustworthy thing in the world. Silver was trustworthy. You can you can you can hold it in your hand. You can define it. The invention of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies invented almost identical to gold, except in a virtual world. Except it's also easier to use, and it's more trustworthy than gold. Like right now. Every government in the world says, oh, I have X amount of gold. The U.S. government says they have 8,000 tons of gold. Well, we pretty much know that's not true. They won't let you go into, into Fort Knox. And you don't know. You know. The funny thing is people who buy bars of gold, they, they never drill the bar. They don't know what's in there. <laughs> and there's a lot of rumors that a lot of this gold is, uh, is, is uh, what is it, molybdenum that has been uh, gold-plated. So it's a trust thing. A monetary system needs trust. And if you can't trust the current system, you're going to have to trust something. Now, gold and silver before 2000, probably 11 and 12, those were the most trustworthy things as, to use as money. But now, now that Bitcoin has been proven to be a trust machine with everybody involved in the community has the ability and not only the ability to see every transaction, but the ability to approve transactions such that it has to be verified for it to be included in the blockchain. That is a trust machine. You have something you can trust a whole lot more than gold now, and it's easier to use. Everybody's got a cell phone. So yeah, prior, I did say, absolutely. I said, you know, all these electronic blips, and, and all the electronic blips, were they were promises. They were debt. Every post- you no know, prior uh, currency that was an electronic electronic blip was dependent upon a third party. It was debt money, whereas Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies they're not debt money. They're not dependent upon anybody. So yeah, yes, my as the world changed in 2010, 11, 12, uh, as the the good guys, as I called them, said, hey, there might be a way to get out of the death and destruction of a monetary collapse and move on to a high tech type world that is run around the blockchain technology, which is a truth machine. Yes, absolutely. I did change my stance. I'm still saying silver is very, very valuable and it's going to be used in a lot of these new technologies. But as far as a form of money, first of all, gold and silver will never become another form of money because nobody has any. The only reason that it was uh, used as money when all other uh, currencies collapsed in the past was that everybody had a little bit of gold and silver because they never trusted the system that came up. Well, this, this has been run for so long, now nobody has any gold and silver, so if, if the monetary system collapses, they can use gold and silver as money. Nobody has any. Very interesting. And I guess, so in your view, Basically, the difference between the electronic blips that you've talked about in the past, you know, the debt based ones is that they are based upon debt versus the cryptocurrencies. Now, they're actually something because they aren't based on debt. I guess. Can you reiterate that for us? Well, yeah, they're, they're not debt based assets. So they're real assets. They are what they are. They are a position on a blockchain that can be verified by anybody in the world at all times. So deceit and lies and cheating and, and all that is gone. It's been taken out of the mix of money, which is an amazing thing. Because you know, if you look at the Roman Empire, how'd they go down? It was from clipping coins, cheating and lying. The thing about Bitcoin and the blockchain technology, you can't cheat and lie because everybody approves and sees everything. So it's really an amazing, amazing invention. And it will, it will. We will be using it as money for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, as long as we need money. We will be using cryptocurrencies. Um, we'll be, we be using gold and silver. I don't know. I, I, I think silver is definitely has better uses than other places. Um, gold, yeah, but I mean, the more people that use cryptocurrencies and the fewer people that hoard gold thinking that's the only other answer – Gold might just go by the wayside, and those you know few people that hold gold, you know, can hold hold their gold all they want, but nobody will have demand for it because 
No, they might not have a need for it. And it is an absolute change of philosophical stance. But remember, there was no thing, such thing as the blockchain technology and the cryptocurrencies prior to 2009. And as it, it, it grew up, got tested, crashed, and, and rebuilt itself and crashed, and re it's, it's anti-fragile, meaning every time it breaks, it fixes that problem and becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And that's why people are – banks around the world, citizens around the world, people around the world, governments around the world – are all developing tools so that they can implement uh, Bitcoin type applications for money, for tokens. Um, it is amazing. It, it's, it reminds me a little on a smaller scale, actually a larger scale potentially, but in 1990, I was working in Silicon Valley and something called the World Wide Web came out. And everybody's like, ah, what, what is this? That's ridiculous. No one's going to send letters via a computer. What the hell are you thinking, Bix? So I didn't even get involved in it, but I could have. I could have been at the early days of companies like Amazon and Google and Cisco and, and all these gigantic industries that got built from the one idea of the World Wide Web. Now we have this one idea of the blockchain that can replace money. It can, it, it can act as a means of exchange for any industry in the world. And it is very exciting. And the people who are in it, uh, some of the smartest and biggest players in the world are getting involved because they see it took a while, but they see what the potential is there and they trust it because it's an honesty machine. Anybody can look at the blockchain and pick out any transaction. And maybe if you wanted to explain for the viewers, like, because I know you've talked before how you believe that markets are 100% manipulated. So how are cryptocurrencies not going to be manipulated as well? Well, they, they are. The, the blockchain can't be manipulated unless 51% of the people choose to manipulate it. So the blockchain can't be manipulated, but everything around it pretty much can. So these companies, the online wallets, the exchanges, all that, yeah, manipulation is, is going on now and it is running rampant. But can the blockchain be manipulated and changed no it can't be changed because every computer has the same all it is is a it's a, a register of every transaction that's ever been made it's a ledger and you can't change it because every computer has the same ledger and adds the same block or it gets thrown out so yeah it's, it's much harder to manipulate but on the exchanges of course yeah manipulation still goes on um but it, it would be something like uh the, the derivative market, which dwarfs the silver market now, without the derivative market, silver couldn't be manipulated. That's closer to what Bitcoin is and the cryptocurrencies are right now. Yes, they could go into an exchange and slam it, you know, the price of physical silver down, but how long could they hold it down with all the buyers? With derivatives, it, it, that's what's getting priced right now in our, our at the LBMA and the COMEX. And the although the the cryptocurrencies do have derivative markets that are developing. Uh, they're not there yet. And there'll be a lot of fighting as to, I, it'll be interesting to see how long a derivative market in the cryptos lasts because it might be much easier to take down that market if it's criminal. And, and a lot of the people within the, the Bitcoin space and the cryptocurrencies won't stand for any kind of criminality. I mean, it's hard enough battle doing what we're doing. I think the government is going to lay down some serious laws against uh, cyber laws against hacking, against messing with the Bitcoin blockchain, even attempts at messing, um, because they know how important it is. Literally, if, if, if it wasn't for blockchain, they'd have to crash the system and implement a gold and silver standard, and that probably would have killed millions of people within the United States. Because of the shutdown of the system, there'd be no food, there'd be no water, there'd be no nothing. And that's what, uh, basically, in 2008, that's exactly what stopped Congress from you know, not granting that bailout. And they ended up giving the banks a bailout because the entire system would have shut down. No, you're saying if the, you know, the blockchain technology wasn't created, they would have had to shut down the system. I know you've told our viewers, you know, your road to root theory in the past, but it seems like it's changed a little bit. It's absolutely changed. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, did you want to reiterate for our viewers where you see us then going from here, what the good guys and bad guys are trying to do? Well, it, it's changed in that the, the plan is still to take down the bad guys. That was the original plan to blow up the derivative bubble as loud as large as possible to destroy all the banks. And once you destroy the banks, every single monetary instrument in the world will go because it's a fractional reserve debt system. Now, the, the thing that has changed with the introduction of the cryptos, they're still going to blow up the, the current system, the current system we live in now, but they're going to have something running right alongside it that they, they can easily transition to. And people will probably make the transition before the government forces people to make the transition because they see it's a more honest system, it's easier to use, and when the banks start failing, there's going to be a lot of people saying, oh my God, I lost my life savings in this bank. And then there's this crypto economy going on right next door that I've heard about and all these people are participating in. Why don't I go get some Bitcoin? Well, you'll have no cash left in your old system bank, but the new system is going to be built up. I think uh, the U.S. government owns Satoshi Nakamoto's one million Bitcoin wallet, and they will disperse that throughout the, uh, the country to the citizens of the United States. I think that's part of their plan. Um, so yeah, things have changed just like technology has changed, just like the world is about to change a lot more. And with all these new technologies that have been suppressed by the bad guys, as I call them, you know, we've, we've been able to make, uh, energy from water, pull the hydrogen out of water since the 1800s. And we're still driving around in these, these gas guzzling cars. Every time someone invents a new form of energy that, that doesn't, you know, that hurts the oil companies and things like that. It's called a national security problem. It is hidden away or the inventor is killed. I mean, that technology should be in use today. Free energy for everybody. We should have had it 100 years ago, and, but it's been hidden. So the world is going to change rapidly. With the Now that the good guys are gaining full power and these bad guys are being put out to pasture, um, I, think, I think you're going to see a lot of changes. Now, how do people prepare going forward? I say get get physical silver, get Bitcoin, get Litecoin, get a couple of the cryptocurrencies. There is no problem. They, they go hand in hand. The, all the guys fighting for silver should be fighting for the cryptos too because both of them will take down the, the criminals that control our system. And the cryptos are just as truthful and honest as silver and gold, probably more so because the entire world can see what – every transaction is and has to approve it. I know one of the things that makes gold and silver safe havens is that, you know, in all history, they haven't really ever fallen to zero, but, you know, stocks can fall to zero, bonds can fall to zero, currencies can fall to zero, but can't cryptocurrencies fall to zero? I mean, how are we to be assured that Bitcoin or Litecoin or any of these are going to be the ones that survive? Can't, can't any of the cryptocurrencies fall to zero? Yeah, most of them will fall to zero. I mean, there's a lot of crap coins out there. And it's got to do with usefulness and utility of money. Some have utility as money, Bitcoin and Litecoin and, and a couple of those. And, and everyone has its own unique you know, kind of feel to it. Monero's more safe than you know, this other type of coin. And, and that's great. I mean, truthfully, and if a, a currency doesn't have any value, it should drop to zero. Uh, yes, in the past, gold and silver has always been useful as money because there was no better alternative. That is the key statement. There was no better alternative prior to 2011, 2012. There was no better alternative to gold and silver as money than – so yes, of course, gold and silver was always the fallback currency. The world has changed. Now somebody invented something – that is honest. It is it is limited in supply, unlike gold and silver. Gold and silver absolutely have unlimited supply. It's just what's the cost to get it. You can go to the bottom of the ocean. You can fly to the moon and get some gold and silver. You can create silver. You can create gold out of thin air. They can they can with the new alchemy. They can create molecules of gold. Yes, it costs millions of dollars to do it. But you can do that, and as technology increases, they'll be able to create as much gold as they need. It'll take a while, yes. It might take 100 years. But gold is not limited in supply, whereas Bitcoin is limited to 21 million coins. 
flat stop. That's it. If it if it splits off in a uh, in a fork, you'll have Bitcoin and Bitcoin Classic, and Bitcoin won't be Bitcoin Classic. That would be two different things. And but Bitcoin would still have 21 million coins ever that could be invented. That's the amazing thing. You know, in the 1850s, with all the gold finds in uh, in California, the price of the value of gold was going down because there was so much of it. It was devaluing the currency. And when they found gold in the Grand Canyon, according to one of my theories, in the 19, early 1900s, right before they created the Federal Reserve Bank, they said, oh, my God, this is millions of tons of gold. What are we going to do? Because it would destroy the economic system. Hey, let's invent this thing called the Federal Reserve, and they'll take charge of it. And that's exactly what happened. So, yeah, there are the... The price of Bitcoin, the price of anything can go to zero. Uh, the price of gold can go to zero. Now that there's an alternative to gold as money, yes, gold can go to zero. Although I think there's some uh, technological uses for gold and it doesn't rust, which is nice. But uh, yeah, things change. Life changes and you, know, you got to keep up with the, the good thing about everybody who's listening to this. You haven't missed the boat on these cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. You miss, yeah, you miss when getting in at $10. But Bitcoin will be well above a million dollars, two million dollars, ten million dollars per Bitcoin in the future. So you haven't missed anything. It's just you gotta get involved and you gotta do your homework. And it does take a lot of homework because I was the same way. I was like, no way, this isn't gonna, this has got nothing to do with this is an electronic blip. There's no way we can rely on this stuff. Of course, I didn't do my homework. And then when you do your homework, it's like a light goes off. You go, oh my god, what an amazing invention. And, and it is actually better than gold and silver. Not, not in as use in an industrial sense for silver, but as a, a monetary sense by far. You know, nobody, nobody wants to walk around with coins in their pocket anymore. All right. Well, Bix Weir, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers any last thoughts you had and where they can find you online? Uh, my last thoughts would be, we are at a point where both silver and the cryptocurrencies are bottoming in this latest smash. So if you have any money left or you need to rebalance your portfolio, if you have too many cryptos, buy some physical silver, sell some cryptos, buy physical silver. If you have too much silver, sell some silver and buy some cryptos. And I can be found at roadtobuddha.com to sign up uh, for free emails and I'll send you a book. Big Swear, once again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Of exchange well, that's a good way to put it i mean that that's what the the core developers of bitcoin decided that they would uh, put all their focus on making bitcoin more secure and that's the whole segwit argument um it does increase the speed a little bit but not much and not for long so the idea behind the bitcoin people was let's turn bitcoin into gold and obviously you can't use gold in day-to-day -day transactions so uh, all the focus with Litecoin has been about speed and cost. Get your cost down, get your speed up. Uh, and the really interesting thing is this, this SegWit uh, uh, user acti activated software type of thing. The, thing. the big thing coming in on August 1st for the Bitcoin people are, are really be turning Bitcoin investors kind of into people looking for an alternative. And Litecoin is just standing there saying, hey, we're four times as fast and we're a lot cheaper. And MIT is making an announcement that day. They say it's about Litecoin. Probably they've been working on something called the Lightning Network, which would make it even faster. So, uh, yeah, Litecoin is a, a trading at like $40 right now. It's been screaming by. This viewer is wanting to know about silver and what your thoughts are on how much will silver be able to purchase after the debt-based financial system has collapsed? Some people have said, you know, you'll be able to buy a house with 500 ounces of silver. Some other people have said maybe even just five ounces of silver would buy a house. What is your perspective on what will be the purchasing power of silver after the collapse? Well, that's, it's very difficult to comprehend that, that silver has been manipulated since the 1850s. So it's, it's, and, and the manipulation is in, in a price suppression. So it's very difficult to understand what a true value of silver is in relation to other things. It used to be an ounce of 
what was it that a dime, a silver dime, a tenth of silver was a day's wage. Um, it used to be that gold, an ounce of gold bought a good suit. Silver is still massively, massively uh, undervalued. Uh, I don't think people will be selling their silver when the system crashes. I think they'll be hoarding silver. And the comp- the people who will be buying silver will not be the everyday people, obviously, because they'll have no money. Uh, it will be the corporations that are inventing the new uh, technologies of tomorrow that require a lot of silver. And they're going to have a lot of money, and they're going to need a lot of silver. So, yeah, I think uh, silver will be valued at least one-to-one with gold in purchasing power. Only mining and any cryptos, and which ones do you believe we should invest in currently? Uh, the, the current downturn is nothing unusual for Bitcoin. As a matter of fact, you can see it has happened many times in the past. Uh, I do believe we've bottomed already over the last couple of days. So uh, ex- I expect a slow rise up and then another giant spike, uh, probably double the price of the last spike. So you're going to get up near $5,000 for Bitcoin. Uh, as far as mining, I am not a miner. I don't, uh, I don't play in that game. Um, I'll, no, I take that back. I had a 21 ink miner. But I think I ran it for six months and made about 50 cents. So it's not worth it for the little guys to mine. Um, but I am very active in the cryptocurrencies. I think Litecoin is the call right now as far as the, the major currencies. Uh, Bitcoin will be fine, but it really is uh, blocking itself out of the day-to-day transaction. And Litecoin is very similar to Bitcoin. I think it's the second longest running crypto besides Bitcoin. And it's four times as fast and I think four times as cheap or a lot more cheaper. So you can actually buy a cup of coffee with Litecoin, whereas uh, with Bitcoin, it, it, it takes too long and it's too expensive. So Litecoin is a, a great uh, crypto to go after. And then there's some new ones, new companies that have come out that have issued tokens. And one of the most exciting ones is Vertasium. Vertasium is a token uh, developed by Reggie Middleton. And the design of that token is to take out the criminal exchanges like the comics and things like that. Um, And that token should do very well. And he's a smart guy. He understands the industry. So I'm buying Vertasium. I'm buying Litecoin. Uh, uh, Ethereum has dropped so far. It's a good time to buy as well. Uh, Ethereum is an amazing technology that all these businesses are, are basing their token uh, access to the blockchain on. So yeah, those are the, the big guys. And then there's all the ICOs, the initial coin offerings, new companies coming out. Um, there's a lot of them. And you really have to do your homework, but you can really hit home, run, home runs on, on the ICOs that are going to be around. Um, yeah, it's exciting. Definitely. And you were talking about Litecoin and this viewer has a question about it. Now, I don't, I don't know enough about cryptocurrencies to really make sense of this, but it seemed like you were saying it's easier to buy things with Litecoin than Bitcoin. And this viewer is wanting to know, do you think that Bitcoin will become more of a store of value rather than a medium of of exchange and Litecoin could become more a medium? Um, Just because it's more useful as a tool. And gold is a great store of value, but, uh, you know, it's not useful as money. Uh, never has been because it's you know so much is, value is packed in in one small ounce. You're not going to walk around with a, a thousand thousandth of an ounce of gold and and make purchases. I don't I don't think uh, any government's going to turn back to gold and silver as money either though, because uh, they don't need to anymore. They've got the cryptocurrencies and and they always hated them. So uh, it, it it might be used as a store of value, but when the trust of in the system goes away and a new uh, type of currency is going to be decided upon. It'll be what can we trust the most, and the blockchain technologies and the cryptos are absolutely the most trustworthy, and the most visible, and the easiest to use in a technological society. This viewer is wanting to know: at some point, do you expect a nation to declare a gold-backed currency, which will create a domino effect of other nations following suit? With the result of a significant devaluation or crash of the dollar. So, did you want to? discuss your perspective on this? Yeah, I, I think the the plan was, the Road to Ruta plan, the stuff that came out of the Fed Boston, was to go back onto a gold standard. That was always the plan since 19, you know, 1913, when the Federal Reserve was invented. The plan was to go back onto a gold standard. Um, 
But the reality was that over those hundred years, they never could figure out a way to do it without causing all this chaos. With the invention of the of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies, I don't really think the plan is to go on to a traditional gold standard anymore. It is not necessary anymore. And that'll be really interesting given, you know, the gold bug stance on, you know, gold is money, that's all it's ever been. That's true, but it's never had competition really. Gold, you know, every uh, gold bug will tell you or gold uh, monetary thinker will tell you that, you know, gold's not the best thing in the world. It's not a perfect money, but it's the best we've got. Well, that was true before 2009, and now we have something better. And that's that's the cryptocurrencies, maybe not Bitcoin, maybe the other cryptocurrencies, maybe these tokens that are being, you know, these these kind of like currencies and kind of like stocks and kind of like warrants that are being issued by these companies that you will need to use these to participate in their realm. And, uh, you know, I, people say, oh, it devalues every time there's a new crypto, it devalues the rest of them. No, I don't think so at all. I think cryptocurrencies that have a use will gain value over time. Every uh, gold bug will tell you, or gold uh, monetary thinker will tell you that, you know, gold's not the best thing in the world. It's not a perfect money, but it's the best we've got. Well, that was true before 2009, and now we have something better. Start investing in gold and silver at sdbullion.com today and join over 35,000 precious metals investors who have made the switch to the lowest gold and silver prices in the industry. SD Bullion recently claimed a spot on the prestigious Inc. 500, making them one of the fastest growing bullion companies in the United States. With low bullion prices and over-the-top customer service, SD Bullion is setting the standard for precious metals transactions. Visit www.sdbullion.com today. Start saving on every precious metals purchase you make. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with financeandliberty.com and back with us today is Bix Weir from roadtoruta.com. Bix, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks Elijah. It's, it's been a while since we chatted. Definitely, and I wanted a chance for viewers to ask you questions, and I asked viewers to submit questions, and we got a whole lot of them, so we'll go as fast <laughs> as we can. Since cryptocurrencies have been just skyrocketing, and some of them have uh, gone down now, the, the market over there in the crypto world has just been crazy recently. We got a lot of questions about cryptocurrencies, and this first question is about um, your thoughts on the powers that be, their plans for cryptocurrencies. What are your thoughts on the powers that be their plans for a cashless society and Bitcoin? Well, there's there's a, a few things. The, the bigger question is, you know, who's in charge these days? Uh, I have long been exposing the fight between the good guys and the bad guys as far as the upper echelon, the powers that be. And I believe that the good guys have taken out the bad guys. So they still have plans for us and plans for uh, our monetary system, but it is not going to be the uh, plans of the bad guys, the one world government, the Illuminati guys. Uh, they they are being removed as we speak, and um, I do not believe they have the power. So the question comes down to what are the plans for the cryptos with the good guys, and do they play a factor in, uh, in the future? Yes, absolutely. Uh, what they're trying to do, the problem we had was we knew the system was bad. We knew we had to destroy the current monetary system, but it was very difficult to go on to gold and silver standard because not many people had gold and silver anymore. Um, and they had suspected that had they allowed the banks to crash, that the system would have shut down. There'd be no food. There'd be no water. There'd be chaos, death, despair, the whole thing. So they've been looking for decades for a way to move from a bad situation, the unbacked fiat system run by the Federal Reserve, to something new. Cryptocurrencies came along. I believe they were part of uh, the, the federal, U.S. federal government, the CIA and the NSA and, and the uh, Federal Reserve were, had a hand in the development, at least definitely the early days, but probably development from the Satoshi Nakamoto side. Uh, many people believe it was a group of people that invented Bitcoin. Um, so it is not necessarily just because it's the deep state uh, within the U.S. government. 
is not necessarily the evil part of that apparatus. So yes, I think the plan is to grow the cryptocurrency sphere as far as as currencies and as tokens used in businesses, grow that part of the market simultaneously with running the current system so there's an easy transition from one, the bad side to the good side. So that's kind of what I think they're doing. So that means they're going to rig gold and silver a little longer, unfortunately. Now, this viewer is wanting to know, does it appear as if the Bitcoin miners have escalated the price of Bitcoin over the last couple of weeks and are now dumping it and into other cryptos or U.S. dollars until the fork settles? Uh, no, no, this isn't this isn't a minor the, the Bitcoin miner issue. Uh, the rise in Bitcoin is people are waking up to the fact that it is a, a sound and honest alternative to the current system. Uh, just look at the Coinbase, which is the largest online uh, wallet. It is it is going crazy with the amount of people signing up. I heard like 40,000 people signed up in a week and all kinds of people around the world are waking up to the fact that the cryptocurrencies are here. They are an alternative to these criminals who control our money right now. And that's why you're seeing price appreciation. And also it's because the old system is dying and all those all those dollars and yen and yuan, they all have to flow into something. And everybody says you know, real estate is overblown and stocks are overblown. And uh, the cryptocurrencies, yes, they're going up crazily, but it's a tiny, tiny bit of the overall market. This viewer is wanting to know, with the crypto market in a downside, are you personally